From preventing pixel skipping to lowering USB port latency, here's how pro players lower input delay on mouse and keyboard. Starting off easy with a mouse optimization, which every pro has done inside your mouse settings. Under additional mouse settings, inside pointer options, you want to make sure that enhanced pointer precision is disabled. Because let's say you do make a fast swipe right, if mouse Excel is enabled, the distance of how far the cursor goes would be very, very inconsistent. Unless you go ahead and disable this setting via unchecking it. That will then result in you getting the same exact distance every swipe you make. In addition to that, it's also a good idea to have your default Windows Sense on the sixth tick. If you didn't know, you can change this via using the arrow keys, so it's super simple. Next, we've got Hone.gg, the ultimate tweaking tool that optimizes your PC for free. As you can see, inside the utility, I can make a general Windows optimizations tweak with literally one click. It's the same with Optimize Windows Power Plan with one click that has been applied. Keep in mind that usually takes way more than one click to actually achieve. It doesn't stop there. I can optimize the Windows timer resolution with just one simple click. That's another one where people usually have to download an entirely different app to optimize that. And if you go ahead and scroll down, you can see how many optimizations you can actually change right here. They've even got network optimizations too. If I just go ahead and tick both of these, you can guarantee in game I'll get a lot lower ping. They even have an option to optimize NVIDIA control panel settings with one click just like so, which will save you time as you don't have to go into the NVIDIA control panel and do all this yourself. They've also got a boost up feature, which allows you to maintain your PC with ease. Like they've got here the junk cleaner, just one click and it'll clear out all your junk. They've also got a backup section where you can make a backup before making any PC optimization so you know your PC will be safe. They've also got a game optimizer, so if you select your favorite game, you can go ahead and optimize it with just one click like so. After that, you can go in game and check out how much FPS you've gained. So check out Hone.gg with the link in the description and thanks to Hone for supporting the channel. Next, let's prevent pixel skipping, which is where your aim may suddenly jump to a final point rather than having to go through all the points it would have had to go through. However, this is quite rare these days with modern mice. But to fix this, you should use the highest DPI you can and I recommend anything over 800. Do not use 400 as to be honest this is outdated. I know a lot of people can't go past 800 as for general desktop use it'd be way too fast and same with marking a map in game that would be too fast and even sorting your inventory that would speed up too. So for most people just use 800 however if you can go higher to let's say 1600 for example that would really benefit you a ton and to ensure your in-game sense stays the exact same after you do increase your DPI you should head over to gamesettings.com slash edpi and select the game, then enter your original DPI, so mine was 400, then obviously your in-game sense, which mine is 10, you'll notice my EDPI is 40. So if I then go ahead and increase my DPI to 800, then if you go back to game settings and update your DPI, so mine's now 800, you'll notice that it's turned into a high sense and my EDPI is essentially doubled. So I need to go ahead and half my in-game sensitivity to get back to my original sense for this game. And that right there is how you safely change your DPI so there's no change in-game whatsoever, but you get the benefits of a high DPI. Along with increasing the mouse DPI, I also recommend that you increase the report rate or the hertz of your mouse, as this can fix things like micro stuttering and lower your latency a ton. A lot of people's max is a thousand, but if your pollen rate goes any higher than a thousand, make sure to use that. I know some different softwares like Razer can go higher with specific mouse models. Oh, another thing to mention while in your mouse's software, um, since a lot of people are using wireless mice these days, like Logitech Pro X Superlight or something similar, um, you'll obviously notice that you have a battery percentage and apparently it's really important that you don't let this go below 30 because it will enter something called a low power mode which people have said makes the mouse act super weird and basically not at its greatest performance so to ensure that your mouse is performing at its best you need to make sure it has got a charge of over 30%. You also want to ensure that you're using the rear slash back USB port on your computer rather than the front one for latency sensitive devices 
like your gaming mouse, keyboard, and controller. Next, we've got keyboard optimizations. Now, in your keyboard software, you'll see an actuation point, and for this, a lot of pros tend to set this to the lowest one possible in order to get the fastest input. As, as you can expect, the lower this value is, the more sensitive it'll be, and the higher the value is, the less sensitive it'll be. So most pros tend to put this to the lowest one possible to get the fastest actuation point. You also may have a rapid trigger setting, and this basically eliminates the second slowest element in input latency. Return key press travel before key activation. This rapid trigger setting dramatically changes the actuation and deactivation point, and your keys will actually activate before you intend to press them, and deactivate when you intend to let go. And you've got some settings you can play around with here. You also may have an additional setting that can lower your input delay even more. You can see here this cuts off 1ms which is pretty good. Next we've got this post from Wooten titled what influences keyboard input speed and inside it you can see here that they basically state that RGB effects can put a strain on your CPU which can in turn cause input lag. So many pros choose to either turn off the RGB effects or if they are using them which some of them do they choose to have a static preset so there's no RGB wave animations going on. Next we've got filter keys, a popular program that allows you to change values that are not possible to set in the standard Windows UI with many people saying it can make your movement feel more responsive and also your editing feel more responsive as well but to be fair I'm not sure if it's a placebo or not. If you want to try it out there's two methods to get it. The first method is manually editing the filter key settings in Windows. You can actually change the settings yourselves in reg edit. Here's a location on where to change the values. Some examples settings of this are on screen right now but guys do do this at your own risk and research it or method two is to use the filter key setter after downloading it if you just extract the file then open it up these are apparently the best settings to use for filter keys that's ignore on zero repeat delay on 130 ms repeat rate on 20 ms flags on and available on. Again, do this at your own risk and if you want more information slash in-depth tutorial, check out the dedicated video I made all about it on screen. Next, you want to go ahead and open up the command prompt, but don't forget to run it as administrator. Inside here, I like to paste in this command that I'll have in the description. And what this does is it checks your entire PC for incorrect, changed or corrupt Windows files. And if any corruption does appear, for myself, as you can see, there's actually none, you can then paste in this command that I'll also have in the description. What this will do is it'll go through and actually find all the missing slash incorrect corrupt windows files and actually replace them for you but there's no need to run that if no corruption has been detected i was just using this as an example oh another thing as well after running those checks i like to paste in this command and it'll basically do a quick scan to make sure all the issues were fixed and that right there is how pro players lower latency on mouse and on keyboard please drop a like on the video subscribe to the channel and use my code for more videos like this one